Hello and welcome to the ARI Tech Talk Live uh, here from Munich from the ARI studio. And today we have a very exciting uh, topic, how to clean your lens properly. Well, it sounds easy, but it isn't easy. And uh, now we are going to the depths of lens cleaning. And I'm Thorsten Maywald, I'm the pro uh, product manager for lenses. And here on my side, we have Joachim Jäger. He is the lens technician from Munich and uh, he is the specialist in lens cleaning, lens repairing and so on. And uh, this evening we give you all the insights, I hope all the insights about lens cleaning and also some background information about our service network and uh, how we act internationally in our service. Please let me give you first a short introduction to our service. Well, the Airy Lens service is of course something which is existent since a very long time. And, uh, but every lens service we have uh, since about two years, and this is quite new. And uh, what you have uh, realized, and this is, has nothing to do with lens service, we are wearing masks. And the reason we are wearing masks is we are in the middle of the pandemic crisis. But what you see here also in between us, this is a plexi, which is protecting each other. And for that reason, we can take off the mask and you see our faces. Okay. So here we are, and we are going back to the uh, uh, different locations of our lens service. When we are looking at the map uh, for the lens uh, services, we have many locations and different levels of service. And if you have your lens for repair, you can go for the advanced level for readjusting or reshimming the lenses for the more simple things. You can also bring your lens for cleaning to this uh, lens service stations. But very interesting is the second level, and this is quite new for us. In the second level, we can totally disassemble a lens. And when I'm saying uh, totally, this goes down to the factory level. So we have dedicated clean rooms, what you normally find only in um, uh, lens manufacturing. And we have MTF testing on axis and off axis. That was uh, founded with a cooperation with Trioptics. It's a German company in the northern part of Germany, in Hamburg. They are specialists for test equipment and, uh, and MTF machines. And we have cooperated with them and then made MTF machines especially for us. So we have on-axis, off-axis uh, MTF machines uh, where we can do all the measurements. We can also uh, go for lens test projection in dark rooms and we can also go for T-stop tester, torque tested and so on. We have all the tools and of course with our uh, dedicated people we have also the experience. This is quite new. So we are offering lens service for signature primes but also for master primes ultra primes, master anamorphics, and also outwards, uh, and other zooms. So if you have any problem with your lens, you can come to us on the different locations. And the second level we have in Munich at our headquarters. We have also in Burbank, in Hong Kong, and in Beijing. So we are in almost every territory. In the rare case uh, that we cannot repair the lens, which might be in 5% of all cases, we will send the lens to Japan, to the factory, but I think most of the lens uh, repair cases we can handle in our service stations. If you would like to hear a little bit more about the lens uh, service um, on our web page, we have a video and uh, in this video we can show you more details about our lens service. You can see also Joachim Jäger in this video, he is acting there, a very nice uh, feature. And uh, well, tonight we give you um, a live demonstration about um, cleaning of lenses. However, if you want to read something more in detail, we have also some literature to download on our web page. Uh, we have a manual, how to clean filters. It's basically the same, how to clean also lenses. And also there is a section in our Signature Prime user manual where we describe how to clean the lenses. Well, but on the other side, we, uh, we have to say the best way is if you don't uh, get your lenses dirty or if you have a special protection on the glass and especially on the filters, which we call the front line of image control, we have oleophobic and hydrophobic uh, coatings. So if you have a fingerprint of your uh, on your filter or you, uh, you have some 
residues of, uh, by permanent markers or liquids on your filter, it's very easy to clean. And my colleague um, uh, Joachim Jäger, he can show you one of these filters. It's a FSD filter so, with density 2.1, uh, so a very dense filter. And uh, we have put some finger prints mm -hmm. on it. And normally this is very uh, complicated to remove. So you can use our dedicated microfiber tissue from Airy, which is available in two different sizes, the small one and the larger one, which is about 14 by 13 inches. And uh, these tissues you can use yep. for cleaning your lenses. Well, that brings me also to some of the materials, uh, what we can use. And uh, don't expect uh, some complicated materials. We have chosen for materials you can buy everywhere, internationally. And this is quite important for us. When you clean your lenses, you should use available materials. And uh, what we have are, are so-called lab cloths. And I think uh, you can buy these lab cloths everywhere. What do you think, uh, uh, Joachim? <coughs> can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, you can <coughs> buy them everywhere, it's no problem. And the uh, benefit of these gloves is that they are made out of cotton. So if you are wearing them the whole day, it's, it's very breathable material. It's very nice. And on the other hand, the fingertips are out of rubber. So you can hold the um, lens very properly and you also have the feeling in the fingers to pick up little screws. So it's not the problem if you sometimes have with gloves out of nitrile or something. So you have a better grip when you're wearing these uh, gloves yeah. here. So you don't put any dirt or fingerprints on the lens and you have a very good grip in it. And you can buy uh, them everywhere. This yeah. is quite uh, important. Well, the second material what we have is uh, chamois leather and uh, which uh, could be leather, but it could be also something else. And uh, it seems, it looks like a very soft tissue. What exactly is it? Yeah, it's also made of cotton and uh, it should be very soft and you, uh, it should not be that litty, or linty because it's otherwise you have the particles on the lens. But it's a common cotton tool. Yeah. <laughs> also a material you can buy everywhere. And yeah. then we have our airy cleaning cloth. This is a very special uh, fabric and uh, we have it also for an inner lining for the pouches of our filters. And you can buy this uh, material also. And uh, well, it's, uh, it comes from uh, Japan. Uh, the brand name is Microdeer. Maybe some of you, you know uh, it. It's, it has an anti-static treatment. It's very, very soft and it's not harmful to the surface of the lenses. Uh, so uh, that's the reason we uh, really recommend this uh, tissue. Yeah. It's really a good material and you can use it how often you want. You can wash it at home. Please don't use softener because softener uh, damaged the, the fibers uh, from the material. But then you can use it for years. So it's Maybe just a, a simple, just cold wash and uh, no uh, additional uh, yeah. cleaner or something like that. And then you can <coughs> uh, use it for a very long time. Well, what else uh, do we have? Uh, well, the very famous cotton swabs. Uh, and in, in two different sizes, I see. Maybe you can tell us a little more. Yes, yeah, we have here the normal Q-tips. That's uh, the, the edges are a little bit rounded, so you can uh, use it for particular cleaning the lenses. If you have only small particles, then you can use your liquid and only uh, clean small parts of the lens. And if you want to go more in the edges, then it's better to use this one because they're a little bit thinner and then you can go here in the, in the edges. And also you can uh, clean the whole lens, of course. And uh, then we have a flat paintbrush. Uh, that surprises me a little. Uh, what are you doing with that, with the flat paintbrush? That's for the parts who often are forgotten to clean. 
for the gearings here and you can use it for, for the easier uh, oh, um, let me say for, for sand or so for dust you can use it dry and only clean it in this way so hold the lens in this direction so you can swipe it in this way down and don't use the lens in this direction because then you will bring uh, the sand particles into the moving parts from the focus ring and that's not so good. Well, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, sand particles. Uh, well, sometimes lenses are coming <coughs> for repair to us and uh, you see them, they might be full of dirt or sand. What exactly are you doing? What, what is the first process what you are doing if you have such a sandy lens? That's the first steps before we bring the lenses into our clean room is to have a rough cleaning from the outside parts. Then we can remove the caps, your cap and front cap. And then we have, uh, it's like an air blower with pressured air and the, the cleaning station. And in this station we can um, yes, <laughs> clean the lens, of course, and uh, with the pressured air and, and uh, the bottom is um, air sucker and it, it sucks the particles into a filter system and after that we bring the lenses in the clean room. If, if I don't have this professional machine which uh, we have in our service facilities, uh, can I use also canned air that I can buy everywhere? Yes, of course, we have here canned air you can use for rough cleaning and also these uh, rocket blowers, like I call them, <laughs> and that's the first steps you have to do. So first bring this up rocket or with this uh, rocket blower you can blow the, the bigger particles of the lens. With rocket speed. <laughs> yeah, yes, <of> course. <laughs> or if you have also with canned air, it also works. And if the particles don't go away with this, then we can use this uh, brush. Uh, this, uh, this very dedicated uh, lens cleaning brush, which is very soft. Yeah. Uh, is it's it very also very anti static? Uh, does it help to suck the, uh, the, no, the dust? No, it's not anti static, no. no but uh, it's very soft and you usually don't have to put the fingers on it. And they're, uh, you can buy them in different versions. So some of them have a cap, so you can put it in your camera bag and store it there. And that's the first step. After blow the dust away, we use this brush and brush away the particles, the big particles. And then we can start cleaning. Very interesting. Well, uh, let's go uh, to the next step. What kind of uh, cleaning agents we are using? And I was surprised uh, that we can use also a glass cleaner, <laughs> which in Europe uh, it's very well known under uh, the brand name Sidolin. I think in the United States it's Windex. M maybe we get a lot of questions and remarks. It's not Windex, but uh, at least uh, that's what I have Googled. And uh, so uh, what are you doing with the glass cleaner? Yes, uh, with the glass cleaner we can, of course, clean the lenses because they are out of glass in most cases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you also can clean the housing of the lens, the outer parts. If they're not so uh, with, with sticky dirt or with uh, glue or so, it works very good. And also for the lenses, of course, because that's what it's made for. So you can clean lens very good. And then we have also IPA, isopropyl alcohol. And uh, <coughs> what are you doing with the IPA? Yes, uh, with the IPA, we can clean, um, yes, uh, as, as I said, if you have uh, maybe gaffer tape on it and you have uh, rests from the gaffer tape, you can use the isopropanol. And also if you have fat or something on, on the lenses or whatever, then you can use isopropanol and it's very good. But you also can, um, if you have only small um, dust or particles on it, you can use it with the uh, Q-tips or with this, uh, with, with the swaps and only clean the small particles or you can use, of course, our microfiber 
uh, cloths. And then I have seen a very interesting bottle, and uh, it's an alcohol dispen uh, dispenser bottle. And um, can you explain how it works and how you are using it? And I have also uh, seen it on, on Amazon. You can buy that, uh, so it's also easy to get. And this is important for us that we are using materials you can easily buy. Yes, that's uh, a little glass. You can open the, the cap, and then it, it prevents the inside from dust. And then you can push it down a little bit and pump the liquid in front. And then you can use also the Q-tips. Don't touch the metal with the Q-tips, only the liquid. And then we can clean here the lenses. Hmm? Lo looks easy, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe we have <laughs> to say uh, one word also to IPA, to isopropyl alcohol. IPA is not IPA, and there are different IPAs, and uh, well, for cleaning it's the alcohol, and uh, for drinking it's that India Pale Ale, and uh, so, well, for some reason, uh, look at that, <laughs> and you have all the materials, and uh, they gave me the beer, and uh, by the way, they gave me two bottles, and but, uh, for but who ordered after, the, 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 after the presentation, and so yeah. I have also some alcohol, some materials on my side, you have all the materials on your side, so uh, it's it's really funny. They give the product manager the beer and the technician uh, the material. Yes, oh, okay, let, let's do some philosophy about that later. <laughs> but who ordered the plexi between us? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, IPA of course is isopropanol alcohol. Not yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's not the uh, India Pale Ale. Uh, so first to start cleaning and then drink it, or the other way around. But don't use that for cleaning. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, you have a problem. Yeah. Or you can use it for cleaning and then you s continue with the isopropyl alcohol. It yeah. makes it rough. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, now we have explained all the materials that we have. Uh, and uh, I think we are now going for the methods. How to clean it, uh, how to clean the, the outside of the lens, the surfaces of the lenses. <coughs> what is the procedure when we have all the materials? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, I will clean the outside of the lens. And yeah. don't forget to wear the gloves, uh, this is quite important. Yeah, it's very hot inside the studio here and I don't want to drop the lens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm stopped with the outside and then as I said, we use this brush and clean first of all the gear, the, uh, the gear rings and the direction down, downside. So all the dust, <laughs> to all the, uh, yeah. the dirt need to fall down. down this is quite lens. important. Yeah. Using the gravity. Yeah, and then we go to the top. And what often is forgotten is the, the lens caps. You also have to clean the lens caps. It makes no sense to clean the lens only and forget inside the, the caps because often there are particles like sand or something. So you also can use the brush and it's if it's a little bit heavier you can use the acetylene, bring a little bit inside and then brush it and then you can use the microfiber torque and put the liquid out or you can blow it out. That looks quite Both simple works. to do. Uh, so. Uh, maybe even I can do it. Finish. But what happens if you have, uh, for example, gaffer tape on the outside of the lens and uh, uh, how <coughs> would you clean that? Of course you can first uh, test it with the acetylene, but if it's more uh, or it's heavier on the, on the lens, then you have to use the isopropanol. We also use the microfiber, put a little bit of alcohol in it, and then we can clean the whole lens. Outside, you also can go over the markings and, and the housing, it's no problem. 
Mm -hmm. And you would uh, recommend to use uh, the IPA and not acetone, what is also quite common. I have seen it uh, in uh, a lot of service stations and also rental mm -hmm. houses. Uh, why would you recommend uh, IPA for that? Because the lenses are painted, not anodized, because uh, they're out of magnesium and you cannot anodize magnesium. And if you use acetone, you likely damage the, the paint from the lens. And also the, the marks and the lines are painted and acetone is not good for painting. Well, and uh, acetone, it could be also harmful uh, for your health. And uh, so it's <coughs> better to use IPA and uh, there might be also some uh, questions. So why we are using magnesium for the signature prime barrels? There's a particular reason for that. Magnesium is about 30% lighter than aluminum. Aluminum, aluminum you can anodize. Mm -hmm. Magnesium and other met, uh, metals you can't anodize. Uh, so it's a three layer paint. It's a uh, ground paint, it's uh, black paint and also protection paint and everything is baked in at high temperature. So it's uh, very robust, uh, but if you have uh, uh, quite aggressive uh, chemicals like acetone or benzol or something like that, which are really harmful for your health, uh, it uh, could also damage uh, the paint. By the way, also the same with the cameras, and cameras are also painted, uh, they are also not anodized. So please be careful with the, uh, with the acetone. There's also another reason, and uh, sometimes in the front of the lens, not with ours, but it could be also with other lenses, you have a retainer ring, which is not made of met, uh, metal, which is made out of uh, plastic, and acetone could be also aggressive to the plastic material. And uh, if you are using too much acetone, um, well, lens <coughs> elements, they have an edge painting and, or an edge coating, which is normally black. And then uh, the acetone c can go inside the lens to the edges of the, uh, uh, of the lens and uh, could be also aggressive to the black edge coating. So better use IPA. Yes, of course. And then the next step, uh, of course, you have to do it with the rear cap also, and then we can clean the lens. Then, as I said, if you only have a small uh, dirt on, on the front lens, you can try it, uh, to clean it only a particle. Then you also can use um, the cedolin or the isopropanol. Put a little bit here on the Q-tip. Then you can clean it um, only the partial here. And so this uh, this is for uh, cleaning some spots. If you don't want to clean yeah. the entire front lens surface, just uh, some uh, little spots. So if the rest of the lens looks perfect, you only have this little spot. You can use Q-tip, so you don't have to touch the whole lens. But if this is not working, you can use the microfiber, and then. We clean it with isopropanol also. And here is very important to start in the center and clean it in a circle motion outwards. The reason is, in the edge on the lens, you have a little gap from the retainer ring. And under this gap or in this gap, there could be sand particles or hard particles. And if you clean it that way, you will bring the particles on the lens and maybe you can damage the lens with too hard pressure or something. And then it's a little bit uh, wet. Then you switch to the uh, uh, other side of the <laughs> microfiber and you can swipe away the watermarks and uh, just mm. with a then gentle pressure, not, gentle not too pressure, much, I yeah, think. Very easy. Yeah. And then it looks perfect. W what happens if you have um, residues of a gaffer tape on the front lens? I know it should never happen, but sometimes it happens. That a lot of things can happen. What are you doing then? Yes, and um, camera assistants are fixing the front caps with gaffer tape, so it uh, likely can't happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Isopropanol is working, so you use the microfiber and isopropanol and you can remove all the, the things. 
So also yeah. that, that way it's, uh, it's working. And um, regarding the rear lens element, are you cleaning the rear lens exactly the same way like the front lens or do you have a different procedure? No, it's exactly the same way. Here you can remove the net holder, magnetic rear holder. And then you can also use microfiber from the middle or with the Q-tips or the swaps. So whatever you want to do. And then also from the middle, from the center, outwards in circles. So exactly the so same exactly procedure, the same procedure. Well, what we have, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, this was um, uh, a demonstration, but uh, it was a clean lens. And uh, so we have prepared also a dirty lens with some fingerprints on the front lens element to demonstrate uh, well, the procedure is really working. And uh, Joachim uh, will also demonstrate it now. Let me go to the light box. Yeah, please. So as you can see here, we have a big thumbprint on the front lens. That would kill the career of the AC. <laughs> yes, and then same procedure. Take the microfiber, a little bit alcohol, isopropanol, sorry, <laughs> not alcohol. Well, IPA, like the <laughs> beer. And then from the middle in circles. Yeah, it works. And with like isopropanol, it's not a problem to touch the, the rings. With acetone, there should be a problem. And then with a new one, new microfiber, and then again to make it dry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's easy. And uh, so you need IPA, you need a microfiber uh, cloth and uh, maybe in different sizes, larger one or a smaller one, and then you can do it. And first of all, you need to remove uh, the uh, coarse uh, sand or something like that with canned air. That sounds very simple uh, to me. And with the filters, it's more or less the same? Or yes. I would say yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I cleaned it before <laughs> on one side. So, so fingerprints and, and permanent markers are n no problem for this material. Uh, so because of the special coating of the filter, it has a uh, hydrophobic and oleophobic coating. Uh, so you can <coughs> uh, also uh, get marks with a permanent marker and uh, this is not harmful uh, to the filter. And uh, also fingerprints, uh, you you can just wipe off. This is very, yes. very simple. You don't need any liquid. Only use the microfiber from Ari, and then you can swipe it off. And also, it's also working with permanent markers and yeah, fingerprints, of course. So no problem. And sometimes, if you have really uh, sticky dirt or something, then you can also use isopropanol. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, basically it's the same procedure what we are using also for uh, the, the lenses. You can also use uh, for the filters, which is quite simple with materials which are uh, available everywhere in the world. And uh, if you want to uh, see this uh, presentation again, and uh, we have uh, on our web page uh, uh, particular uh, sites with news and updates uh, about filters, about lenses, uh, well, also stories about our lenses and filters, and uh, dedicated videos, uh, also this video here and some others. And uh, of course, uh, there is also an every channel. You can uh, create your own playlists uh, and for whatever you are interested in, not only lenses, also cameras, accessories, and so on. So a lot of th uh, different things, and uh, every day there are, uh, there are updates on that. 
So I think uh, more or less we are at the end of the presentation and uh, we are mm. open for the questions. And uh, so I hope we have many questions uh, about <laughs> lens cleaning. Maybe somebody is also surprised how easy it is. Uh, don't make <laughs> yeah. things complicated, make it as uh, easy as possible. Otherwise nobody is doing it. So uh, <laughs> let's open the session for questions uh, and uh, let's see what comes in. Yeah, thank you guys. So there's an interesting question coming in. Somebody's asking whether we could recommend a base you know, what you have on your table there, or would you hold the lens all the time? So where do you put it down? This one. Yeah. This is an, um, how it's called in, in English, an ESD protection. Uh, it's just somehow um, um, anti-static. Uh, yes. If you have electronic, yeah. uh, electronic components, devices, uh, yeah. uh, so that you don't have shortcuts of, of the yeah. electronics uh, and so on. You can connect it here with the, the electric ground of your house. Then uh, you have a wristband on it, and then you can do uh, works on electronic components, and we use it also on every uh, workplace we have, also in the lens room, because inside we also have the LDS parts. So if we uh, remove the, the outer parts, we have to have these uh, mats. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also commercially available, yes. I think, uh, so, yeah. so yeah. you can maybe even at Amazon, Different and, uh, so maybe the question was also uh, how to handle the lens when it's on the table. And um, what I've seen in our service, uh, they are rotating uh, platforms, you can, the lens, you can put uh, the lens on the platform, you can rotate it. Uh, this is more a professional tool, so if you mm -hmm. know you are doing lens cleaning every day, maybe it's the, the best way to do, then you uh, don't need to hold the lens. And how would you clean your lab gloves, which you have in the hand? So if they the are gloves? dirty, how would you? How would I you throw it away. You throw yeah. them away. I throw it away because if you use other liquids, or also um, because of this rubber here on the front, it's very uh, difficult to clean them. So I throw it away. I have it. Uh, it depends on the lens. So maybe I, sometimes I have it the whole day. Sometimes I use three, four pairs of gloves a day. It depends on how you, uh, what you have to do. Yeah. Okay, and where do people buy that? What is the type of the glove? What's that called? Uh, I don't know the manufacturer, but the uh, usual gloves you can buy it everywhere, online or in. It's in cotton, uh, isn't it? It's cotton. It's out of cotton, and okay. only the fingertips are it's out of rubber, rubber yeah. Yeah. because otherwise you will sweat. If you have it the whole day, you will sweat. So right. well, out of cotton, it's very breathable. Maybe we can answer this, uh, these questions also by uh, online and uh, <coughs> find out what is the exact type and uh, uh, give uh, also the company name uh, and where you can buy it. Okay. Oh. And just for repetition, so the window cleaner, the regular window cleaner, what we call Stidolin in Germany, so what is it used for? For the lens itself or for the barrel? You can use it for both, for the barrels, the outer parts, the caps and also for the lens because it's a, it's a window cleaner, a glass cleaner. You can use it for the glass, of course. No damage for the coating. No damage. You can use it, no problem. But it's not so uh, aggressive. No, aggressive is the wrong word, like uh, isopropanol. Not, not so strong. And not if so you strong, have, uh, yeah, not aggressive. A lot of yeah. dirt on, uh, on the lens. Yeah. Uh, maybe the it's the first step, and if yeah. it doesn't work, you can uh, go for the IPA yeah. um, in, this, in this order. Maybe that, uh, that works. So in, in most cases, that's enough. You don't have to use isopropanol, but if it don't work, then you can use isopropanol. Yeah. And so at the beginning, somebody was asking, whether we would really use IPA on the glass, but yes, the answer is we would yeah. use it yeah. carefully, of course. Yeah. We start with the window cleaner, and if this is not yeah. effective enough, we go to the IPA. Yeah. IPA is really no problem, not for the housings, for the color, for the paint, for nothing. It's really working good. But you have to, of course, you have to be careful, not too much pressure. Yeah. All right. So somebody else is asking about the microfiber cloth. So would you, how would you clean that? Would you reuse that? Yes, we will reuse that. You can do it in the washing machine without softener, cold wash maybe, and then you can reuse it. All right. What about Kleenex facial tissues instead of in place of the microfiber? 
Um, we had the, the tissues out of cotton. Uh, on the glass, it works good. Not so good like microfiber, but it, it could work. But if you come to the edges or to the retainer rings, and you touch the rings, then you will have lint here on the, on, the, on the paint, because the paint has a little bit of uh, a rough surface. So the cotton uh, cloth is not so good. OK. So something which is not really happening in Germany, but in case you would shoot in the desert and you get a really um, a dense, really dirty with a lot of, lot of sand, many sand after a desert shooting. How do you start? Yeah, good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the sandy lens. <laughs> our signature primes are very good uh, covered. So there are different um, creases inside. So there's a barrier that the particles don't can go inside. And from the outside, we I will start with pressured air, of course, and all film with the blower here. And then if second step is the brush, then you can brush it. And then you should have the most particles away. Okay. So what happens if IPA is failing? You first take a beer and then you try it again. <laughs> uh, that's also a good idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you do then? What is the next step? Uh, uh, not after IPA, uh, well, did we have an, a case where AP IPA was not working? I don't know really, no. Uh, what, what I never had it, but if you have a paint here, whatever reason uh, comes paint, red paint or blue paint on, on the housing, then maybe you can use a little bit of acetone or something. But be very careful with acetone because the barrels are also painted, so you can damage the paint on the, on the housing. And also the engravings and uh, yeah. well, if you have uh, something like that on the lens surface, uh, let's say you have paint on the lens surface, uh, well, we know something could happen. Uh, well, uh, no. if you cannot remove it, uh, at, at some point you need to replace the front lens element. Well, you can use more and more aggressive materials, um, of course, but at some point uh, you are not just removing the paint or whatever it is, you are also removing the coatings or uh, it is that aggressive uh, that is also um, aggressive to the glass itself. So it depends. Uh, it's difficult uh, to say from uh, the distance. We have to see it, uh, but at some point uh, you have to replace the front or rear lens element. So if you only have small uh, drops of uh, color, then you can maybe use it with a, a Q-tip and acetone, but only a particle and not too often because it will work one time and two times, but the, the third time can be too much an only particle inside of the of the lens surface, not on the edges, because the edges, as my colleague said, is uh, edge painted and that will kill the front lens. <laughs> okay, so we talked about signature primes and also the RE size lenses, but the question comes in, can IPA be used on all lenses and all filters? Well, uh, <laughs> I would say on modern lenses and filters, yes. Uh, on very old lenses, and filters, um, you have to be careful. Well, very old uh, coatings, they were not so resistant as modern coatings. And when you have a lens, there are also different uh, coatings. The outside coatings are much more resistant than the inside uh, coatings, even on a modern lens. Because a modern lens is a highly sophisticated technical tool, and in some cases, every lens element, every surface has a dedicated coating. So outside is okay with IPA or modern mm. lenses. Inside, uh, there are special cleaning agents from uh, the lens manufacturer. With the older lenses, uh, well, maybe you can try it if you have a spare lens. Uh, there are some glass materials which are very soft and uh, very aggressive um, uh, cleaning agents uh, like acetone could be um, too aggressive for the glass material. With the IPA, it could work. Mm -hmm. So there is not uh, not a general rule, and uh, so we can only tell you about our lenses and modern lenses. With the old lenses, with the vintage lenses, well, uh, you have to be careful. 
or if you have a lens available which, which is totally damaged, um, when you have a set of vintage lenses, maybe you can try it there and get your own experience if it works or not. Okay, so we have more questions coming in and we are running a bit out of time. So all the questions we will not answer now, we will answer later via email. Um, short question, Kim wipes or Kim Tech wipes, what we talked earlier in the German session, yes or no? Kimtech. Yeah, Kim Techs are well the, uh, the paper or wipes or what oh, you have wipes. also yes. in the lab. Yes, yes, but inside of the surface of, in, in, of the lens. Inside, okay. Outside, a little bit difficult because it's too linty. All right. So isopropanol should be 99% or should be 70%? Better 99%, but also 70% is working and it's much cheaper. <laughs> okay, cheap is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what about breathing on the lens or breathing on the filter and yes. then cleaning it? Good breathing, or not good? Breathing helps often, but at this time and also in the clean room we wear masks and the breathing is not so easy. <laughs> okay. But it works. Uh, also with the microfiber, breathing on the lens and then with the microfiber it's very good. How does IPA compare to Pancro? Pancro li liquid. Pancro liquid. Uh, I don't know what this I, is. I don't know what it is, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we get uh, more information what it is. Uh, most probably, mm -hmm. it's a, a brand name, and uh, we can answer uh, the the question later on. Yeah, well, not not stop learning. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Pancro. Uh, I, I the other show. Uh, I, I I know Pancro lenses. So, uh, <laughs> but, so uh, give some tips on cleaning fish eye lenses, like the ten millimeter ultra prime. Well, the 10 millimeter ultra prime, it's a rectilinear, it's not a fisheye. Well, and basically it's the same like cleaning other lenses. Right. Uh, it's just a larger lens element. Well, we have the 12 uh, signature prime. We have also a 12 uh, master prime with a very big front lens element. It's the same, no difference. Okay, maybe the last question, where can I learn how to repair ARRI lenses? Well, we have uh, um, also training courses. Uh, Joachim, maybe you can tell a little bit about that. Uh, so we give sessions uh, how yep. to repair lenses. Yes, of course. Uh, we have the ARI Academy, as you know, and there we have the advanced level service training for lenses. There we have usually two days where we can repair lenses. And we will disassemble the whole housing and all the LDS parts and also the front lens and assemble it again after that. <laughs> and then we adjust uh, focal flange distance and LDS parts. We can, uh, as of course, both uh, the um, iris and the focus ring, we can adjust with the LDS, with the LDS calibration station. And after this training, if you have participated it, you will get a license and then your advanced level service center and then you also can buy the parts you need for that. Only if you have advanced level status, you can buy advanced level parts. And after this training, you're able to do that. So I think uh, we are finishing <laughs> the session. There are more questions uh, which we answer online. So thank you very much. Uh, for this uh, Tech uh, Talk Live uh, about lens cleaning. And uh, Joachim, I think uh, we are going for IPA now. Please send over me the IPA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you.